Hey guys, Dan here from Code Bueno. It's been a little bit. I've gotten some things done. Got an update for you, and then I've told people in the comments I'm going to make a video about uh, study habits, so we're going to include that today too. I've finished four classes since my last video. I think my last post was a little over a month ago. It was uh, April 16th, I believe. I had just started Discrete Math 2 when I made that last video. I finished that one. That was a great class, really enjoyed it a lot. Next there was Data Management Foundations and Data Management Applications, basic database management. They could have rolled those classes into one class, honestly. The Applications class was a lot of the same stuff that the Foundations class was. It focused a little bit more on hands-on, practical aspects of it. Interesting courses, there is coming up in the program later on, there's an actual certification in SQL and SQL, so there's another class that's specifically on, on SQL. So I suppose these were supposed to focus more on the database management aspect of it, less on the querying, but they went into both. Lastly, most recently, I finished Software One, which is the first Java class in the computer science program, and that was a lot of fun. There's no objective assessment in that one. That's a performance assessment. It's a big project that you have to do. So the instructions for the assessment give you a depiction of uh, multiple screens for a graphic user interface for a GUI. They give you a whole bunch of instructions about the functionality that you're supposed to achieve, and then they say, have at it. There's one section of the instructions where they tell you uh, you've got to work on uh, some different exception handling aspects of it, where they told you to, to pick one or two of these and handle those. I got really into it, and I ended up doing everything. I enjoyed that class a lot. I really am enjoying the, uh, the actual programming courses. I really enjoy all these classes. I really enjoy all this subject matter. So at this point, I've finished 41 credits so far since, since the beginning of March. So that's 11 classes that I've finished. I have 42 credits left to finish the degree. That's another 11 classes. So I'm right at the halfway point credits wise. There are 14 weeks left in the term out of 26 total weeks in the term. So I'm just prior to the halfway point time wise. I misspoke about something in an earlier video. I want to make sure that I correct myself on this so that I'm not putting out bad information. I should probably go back and add some little annotation to that video and I'll do that later. I said in a prior video that if I had to take a second term to finish the degree, I was just going to roll that time period into another degree because I figured I'd only have two or three classes to finish in a second term and so my understanding was that I could just go ahead and start a second bachelor's degree and get two degrees by the end of that second term. I found out since then that that's not an option. You're not allowed to work on more than one degree in any term. There is an option to go part-time rather than paying the full full-time tuition to finish what would only be one or two classes for me next term. I could go part-time. I don't want to do that. Not only because I don't want to pay for another term, but because it's a whole six month stretch. I'm only going to be using a, a couple weeks of it to finish the whole degree, and then I've got six months. I just have to wait to actually get the degree. But beyond that, what I am intending to do now, understanding that I'm not able to get a second bachelor's degree, is that I'm going to finish this degree in this term. I'm, I'm determined to do that. And then I'm gonna to have to take a couple months off. I have a project to work on in another state that is not related to this degree at all. But what I plan to do is take a couple months after I finish this term and then go back for a master's degree in uh, data analytics. So that would give me a, a bachelor's in computer science and master's in uh, data science within about a year and a couple months. And I think that that would be fantastical. So that's the intent now. I should be able to finish that whole thing within six months, just the same as I'm, as I'm doing this, I think. So anyway, that's where I am as of right now. I told some people in the comments that I'd be talking about study habits. So, study habits. I had kind of a methodology that I was following for the first couple months of this program, and that has shifted in the last two or three weeks. So I'll let you know what I was doing first, and then I'll let you know how that's changed. This new process hasn't fully been tested. Uh, to look at it objectively, you might think it's not very sustainable, but we'll see how it goes. Give you some background. I, I have a family. I have a wife. I have two kids. I have a, uh, a toddler, and then I have a baby. She is, uh, she'll be four months and a couple weeks. And the baby was born uh, less than a month before I started the program in the first place. So my sleep schedule has not been normal since before I started the program. I kind of rely on that at this point to get as much done as I'm getting done. The first few months, the typical process that I was following was that I would try to be awake by about 4.30 in the morning, try to be at my desk studying by 5 o'clock. 
my older daughter would get up, she'd come in the room and she had a little couch that uh, I'd have on the floor over here. She has a little leapfrog reader with the books and the pen and everything. And so I'd get her all set up with that to where she had some activities to do. And I'd keep studying until about seven o'clock whenever she's getting hungry, ready for some breakfast. So I get up and make her some breakfast. And then about 7.45, 8 o'clock, I'd come back, sit down and get back to studying. Anytime things needed to be done during the day, my wife needed help with anything, I'd, I'd get up and go help out. If she needed me to take the baby for a while, I'd take the baby. So that goes until, oh, about noon or so. I'd take a break, uh, help out with lunch, play with my daughter, um, get back to work for a little while, and then generally I'd call it a day around 10 o'clock at night. The downside of it was that there was a lot of uh, interruptions throughout the course of all that, and uh, my wife, I think, preferred whenever I spent more time uh, out of my office during the day. So I shifted my schedule of all this stuff so that now I do strictly non-school stuff typically until early afternoon, until about one or two o'clock. That's when I sit down and start getting to work on things. Now five or six, that's about time that I start getting my older daughter uh, ready for bed. You know, we do story time and books and everything else. And then I get back to work around eight so I get a few hours in prior to 8 from around 2 to around 6 or so. And then my real study time every day is about 8 p.m. to about 4 a.m. And that's generally when I go to bed is 3.30 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Like I said, objectively looking at it, it seems like probably not very sustainable. Maybe not uh, the best idea. But I've been running on about 4 hours of sleep every day since my daughter was born back in February. So... It's not bad. I mentioned in a prior video that I, I aim for eight to 10 hours a day of actual study time. Now that, that's taking into account the fact that some of the time is interrupted. I'm, I'm in and out of here a lot, especially during the day, but I aim for a total of eight to 10 hours of focus, actual study time every day. And I generally get that. Now, how do I go about this to knock out all these classes. Well, as you might have surmised by this point, there's no secret to it. I just put in a lot of hours. I spend a lot of time on school stuff and uh, not nearly as much time as most people do on sleep. So I'm really fortunate in that we have home business, so hours are flexible. We don't have to subscribe to anybody else's work schedule. That's very helpful. So, what do I do during those hours in order to learn all the material for a course within one week? Most of these classes that I have done so far, I did not have uh, any sort of background in. I was familiar with less than 5 to 10% of the material that was being tested. That's not true for maybe two or three of the classes. But for the majority of them, that is the case. So what do I do? Well, I read absolutely everything that they give me in the official course material, and I take a huge amount of notes. I essentially rewrite the course material as I'm going through it. Handwritten notes, handwritten notes, handwritten notes. Everything I do is handwritten. I don't take any notes on the computer whatsoever. I'm a firm believer that the process of writing something with your hand helps you to remember it and helps you to internalize it better than typing it out. That may not be true at all, but it works for me right now. So that's what I'm sticking with. Aside from that, I like having that uh, available to flip through. I've shown you notebooks in some prior videos. Here's a thing I haven't shown you. These are the pens that I have completely used up <laughs> since I started this program. An important part of this process for me is uh, colors. I use lots of colors in my notes. It's kind of a more recent development. The first few classes I did, I had black and blue. Now I've got a whole bunch of different colors, which comes in very handy, especially for, uh, for programming languages. Uh, for Java, multiple colors. The colors help to keep things organized a little bit so that it's easier to see. My handwriting's not great. It doesn't really matter all that much if I go back to read it later. Now this notebook is really the exception for me. It's actually a sketchbook. I really like using this for Java. That was really helpful having the big page, no lines. Typically, I use these. Cost about 80 cents a piece at Walmart. I use at least one full notebook for every course. Lots and lots of notes, lots and lots of reading. I read almost everything that they give me. Now the exception to that was this Java class I just did. The very first page of the material said that 
they expect you to already be familiar with Java whenever you start it. In reality, you really didn't need to be. You could have started that and gone through it and they would have taught you most of what you needed to know. But because it said that, and because we have access to Pluralsight, I went and found a Java Fundamentals course on Pluralsight and I spent a full week just going through all their videos. And that's what all of my notes in this big notebook are from, actually. I then went back after I finished all those videos and I went through the first three or four chapters of the course material for Java that uh, WGU gave us through U Certify. As I was going through that, I realized I probably didn't need to go through that and I just went ahead and started on the project. If I could go back and do all that again, I'd probably just start on the project about three days in. The C++ class a few weeks back um, covered all the, the general programming concepts and that was really all you needed to know to get started with this. I spent a full two weeks taking care of that class and like I said, I really enjoyed it anyway. I really got into the project. I did a lot more than I was supposed to do and made it look nicer than I was supposed to make it look and I had fun with it. So let's see, what else? Taking exams. I don't do pre-assessments until I'm about 80% of the way through the course material. I don't ever want to have to retake an exam. So I don't ever want to take a pre-assessment before I'm relatively confident that I can pass it. So as soon as I'm done with that, I can request that she add me to the class and then I request permission to take the objective assessment. I generally finish up the rest of the material through the next day and then I take the objective assessment the next night. Almost always take those objective assessments in the middle of the night. Start them around midnight to 2 a.m. A couple reasons for that. One, it gives me that full day to finish the material, but then go back and review a little bit of things that I need to review. I'll take the pre-assessment coaching report so you can look at what you missed and go back and review those sections specifically. Also, everybody's asleep for the most part anyway. I know my wife has to wake up and feed the baby multiple times a night, but aside from that, it's undisturbed. So, coming up now, I am starting Data Structures and Algorithms 1, which is Python. I didn't realize Python was going to be part of this program. I'm glad that it is. I haven't really gotten into that at all just yet. We had a, a birthday a couple days ago. My mother was in town for that. And since I finished the software one, I've basically taken three full days off since then, which is the longest stretch of not studying that I've had since I started this whole thing. Goal is to finish this course by next Tuesday. And then I've got software two, which is advanced Java concepts and knowing what I know now, I plan to just start working on the project. So yeah, got data structures and algorithms coming up. Right after that, I got software two, and then I got data structures and algorithms two. Oh, what's after that? Following that, fundamentals of information security, operating systems, and on and on and on. And I'll let you know about that when I get there because I have no idea what that all covers. So, making these videos does take me a while, especially the editing, which is mostly just for conciseness, just cutting out my little tangents and ums and things. Thanks for following along. Thanks for your subscribes. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for your comments. Any other questions, any other comments, leave them down there. Uh, as you can see, I, I try to respond to folks. I try to interact as much as I can. That's all I got, guys. I'll talk to you next time.